last night, but we can't roll out an isolated storm during the early evening hours. Temperatures will be in the low 80s later on tonight. It's warm, it's muggy and temps will dip down through the upper 70s. And remember, you can track whatever weather comes your way right down to your neighborhood on your desktop or smartphone. Just check out the interactive radar feature in the weather section of WXII12.com. And those storms last night caused a lot of widespread damage. I want to show you some video from Winston-Salem where strong winds and heavy rain are being blamed for causing part of this old building to come tumbling down. The old Piedmont Leaf Tobacco Company has been vacant for years. Nobody was injured. And the severe weather we've been dealt the last couple of weeks has some businesses cleaning up in more ways than one. Stephanie Rosinski has more on the storm cleanup cash in from Guilford County. Storm after storm has knocked down tree after tree, and these days crews find themselves busier than ever. Carolina Stump and Tree Services is a family company that's been in business for 35 years. But now this family find themselves working overtime due to all the damage from nonstop storms. Doug Tasker says his team is having a hard time keeping up. The minute they begin one project, storms roll through, delaying their progress and only knocking down more trees, which in turn has increased the tree trimming competition. This is the most busy I've seen in a while, so I mean... There's a lot of people out there that actually, you know, just people with trucks and chainsaws and they're actually trying to go to work and knock on doors and stuff like that. And it's really hurting some people, you know, because it puts a bad word, you know, for the other people that are, do try and it puts us behind and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people out there that's actually taking advantage of some people. So, you know, they got to watch out for that as well. Tasker also urges people to check on the property of elderly neighbors who may not be able to get out of their homes and inspect for debris and damage. Stephanie Brzezinski, WXII 12 News. Well, many of you joined the WXII 12 News team when the storms came through last night, sending us your local, your local photos and videos of damage, including down trees around your communities. We would love to see what you're seeing. Just snap it and send it to the you local page of WXII 12.com. No business with a gun in the community. That's how I feel. Tough words tonight from the woman who was accidentally shot by the next police chief in Winston-Salem, and that's not all she has to say. Margaret Johnson joins us in the newsroom now with the rest of the story. Margo. Well, good evening to you. 33-year-old Tamara Witt is angry and says Barry Roundtree shouldn't be anybody's chief. Well, today, the police forensics team was back at the crime scene collecting more evidence. This time, they're focusing on a big hole in Witt's window that could be fragments from the bullet that is still lodged in her left thigh. Now, this all started Wednesday afternoon when police responded to a call of a man pointing a gun in the neighborhood. Incoming Chief Roundtree heard the call and joined other officers on scene. According to police, Witt's dog charged at them and Roundtree fired his weapon at the animal. The bullet ricocheted off the pavement and hit Witt in the leg as she stood in the driveway near the dog. Now today, with the bullet still lodged in her thigh, she told me she is in terrible pain. Both she and her fiancé are angry that Chief Roundtree fired his gun so close to her. That's what really broke me down because it could have been my head, it could have been in my stunt, you know, it could have any, I mean, anything, I could have been killed. And if I got a human right there, you know, I'm not finna fire a 40 caliber round that close and jeopardize a human life for, because I feel threatened by a dog, you know, and I just, you know, I have no understanding for that and I don't think that there's no way that you can dress that situation up and make it right. No business with a gun in the community, that's how I feel. Now, if he's going to be behind a desk, he's going to be behind a desk, but out in the community with a gun, no way. We don't need that. I don't think he should be sworn in as police chief, and, and I really believe that people should rally against it. Well, acting chief David Clayton says Chief Roundtree and the rest of the department is very sorry about what happened and are very concerned about Miss Witt. I asked why the chief would be responding to a street call like this anyway, and here's what Clayton says. Chief Roundtree told him he was in the area when the call of a man with a gun went out, and he knew an officer was close, but his backup was far away, and he didn't want that officer going into a dangerous situation alone. As for claims from the victim that Roundtree didn't immediately help her after she'd been shot, Clayton said this. It's a very dangerous situation. The officers are on a high alert status and uh, they, they, they're making split second decisions and then they proceeded with caution and, and rendered aid as, as best they could. 
Well, the investigation is now in the hands of the SBI, and Clayton says he doesn't know the details of what they are doing, and he promises there will be no cover-up. Back to you. All right, a story will continue to follow. The dog remains under quarantine tonight at the Versailles County Animal Shelter. As for the man who sparked the initial call to police, he remains on the streets tonight. New tonight at 5 o'clock, a private nonprofit foundation created by friends of Governor Pat McCrory is holding an exclusive policy briefing today and tomorrow at the Grandover Resort in Greensboro. This two day event costs $5,000 to attend, or for $500, you can have dinner tonight with the governor. Bill O'Neill is live tonight in Guilford County with more on that story. Bill? Can the name of the group putting this uh, shending on is called the Renew North Carolina Foundation. It is one of those nonprofit groups that doesn't have to identify its members and doesn't have to report how much money it raises. The president of the group is a Greensboro attorney named Bob Singer. I contacted him today for an interview. He denied our request. Now, this exclusive policy briefing that is coming this weekend uh, from the governor working behind the scenes with Republican leaders in Raleigh on two very important issues, and that being the state budget as well as tax reform. Now, critics question the perception that this is nothing more than wealthy business leaders paying for access to the governor at a key point in time, and among those critics are the unemployed. Four days from now, 70,000 jobless North Carolina residents will lose their benefits thanks to a new law signed by the governor. There is a protest rally they're starting to organize right now. It is scheduled to begin at 5.30 this evening to let the governor know they are not happy with the actions that he is taking. By the way, Cam, the governor is not the only governor here tonight. Nikki Haley, the governor of South Carolina, is a featured guest at this uh, private event. And you talked about the cost for attending this two-day policy briefing. To be a member of this foundation for a year, we're told costs anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $50,000, a very exclusive club. Back to you. Thanks a lot. Bill O'Neill reporting live tonight in Greensboro. We have some good news to tell you tonight about former Guilford County Commissioner Billy Yao. He is now in fair condition at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. It was a week ago that Yao suffered a serious head injury in a well drilling accident. Three people have been charged in the murder and robbery of a Lexington man. Maximino Rubio was found dead in his home on Bainey Drive on June 18th. Tonight, Derek Troutman, Amanda Strack, and Jerome Robinson, all of Lexington, have been arrested in that case. They are being held without bond. Breaking news out of Washington, the Senate has just passed a historic immigration bill. Passed 68 to 32, eight more than needed to send that measure to the House where it is now headed. Looking ahead, there will be a meeting in Walnut Cove tonight to decide if that community will keep its police department. Town leaders have been discussing eliminating the department and contracting with the Stokes County Sheriff's Office to save money. The town's board of commissioners will vote on a contract at its final budget meeting tonight at 7 at the Walnut Cove Senior Center. North Carolina woman has been charged in the drowning death of a toddler. This after she was convicted in another toddler drowning last year. 27 year old Amanda Reed was placed on probation in that first case. Police in Jacksonville have now charged her with involuntary manslaughter in the May death of a 20 month old. That toddler drowned in a residential swimming pool while in Reed's care. The first case she was charged in, the toddler drowned in a rain swollen drainage ditch. We are learning more tonight about the deadly hotel carbon monoxide poisoning case out of Boone. Tonight, there are signs posted on the door saying the building is undergoing repairs and renovations. This, as we learn, the family that owns the Best Western Plus also owns the Red Carpet Inn in Boone, where a seven-year-old drowned in 2010. The Patel family was cited in the child's death, and a fence was eventually placed around the pool. Over the last three months, an elderly couple and an 11 year old died after staying in a hotel room where carbon monoxide leaked from a faulty pool pump. A bill that would require North Carolina educators to teach that abortions are linked to premature births later in life has passed the full house in Raleigh. That bill requires students in grades seven and higher to learn about the risk factors associated with premature birth, including abortion, inadequate prenatal care, and smoking. Now heads back to the state Senate, which will have to approve the House's changes. In Washington, a hearing was held today on the nomination of North Carolina Congressman Mel Watt as director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency. Watt took questions from the Senate Banking Committee. The Federal Housing Finance Agency oversees government-controlled mortgage lenders Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. President Obama credits Watt for helping enact rules to protect consumers from dishonest lenders. 
Meanwhile, Charlotte Mayor Anthony Fox was confirmed today as the next Secretary of Transportation. The White House and the President released a statement saying, quote, I welcome Anthony to my team and I look forward to working with him as we aim to modernize the infrastructure that powers our economy, end quote. A whopping settlement coming up on WXII 12 News. We investigate after taxpayer money is used to pay for a former deputy's crime against a lesbian couple. Yes. We have many deaths as a result of the overdose and misuse of prescription medications. There is a new tool in the fight against prescription drug abuse. How one Piedmont County is heating things up to combat this growing epidemic. Could the key to weight loss be in a vaccine? Details on what researchers in a triad are studying. You're watching WXII 12 News at 5.